we're going to sing a song about my grandson and uh, sing a song about uh, my brother-in-law, uh, who's fondly known as Uncle Ed. And it's to thank him for uh, uh, helping me out in a situation that uh, I was driving from uh, uh, Los Angeles up to Santa Rosa, California. That's about 400 miles. It was about 25 years ago. I was in an old ranch wagon with the entire family. And uh, I backed out of the garage. And then I thought, gee, I better check the water level on the radiator. I got to go over the Tahoe Pass. And it was the summertime. So I pulled back into the driveway, went over to get the hose, and it, it just dawned on me, you know, if I put in antifreeze, it'll increase the boiling temperature of the water, and it'll be much more effective. So I opened the garage door, and I got a can of antifreeze out, and uh, I topped off the radiator and uh, pulled back out. What I didn't realize was that that was a can of antifreeze that had been emptied, and my son, who was airbrushing, filled it with turpentine or paint thinner. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, you know, I pulled out, and I was within about 10 miles of Santa Rosa, and I started to hear the water pump, you know, squeaking. And I thought, oh, God, you know, the water pump's going out. And then I started smelling the paint thinner, you know. And I'm thinking, my God, that bearing's getting hot enough to burn the paint, you know. And I pulled in to the house in front of the relatives, and the radiator was steaming. You know, the family was frantic, and of course the fluid from the, the radiator was coming out. And that's where the song begins. You know? <laughs> well, I pulled into town from a 10-hour trip from West Hills to Santa Rosa. When out the front door came my brother-in-law, Ed, and he slowly circled the car. He motioned to me, pull down the window. I frankly comply. He said, crack the latch, and he lifted the hood, spoke sternly to me this reprieve. Charlie, Charlie, we got a problem. I smell turpentine. The water pumps are screaming, the radiator's steaming, and the engine smells like hell. Ed got on the phone, ordered the parts, towed my car to his home. And all day long, he diligently worked fixing my broken down mess. Now and then, you'd hear from him thunder from under the motor in a commanding roar from down on the floor. This is what he'd say. Charlie, Charlie, we got a problem. I smell turpentine. The water pops are screaming, the radiator steaming, and the engine smells like hell. Well, the moral for all in this little tune is be knowledgeable and efficient, because in the real world, you will be told Uncle Ed's are one in ten million. It's Uncle Ed's. Uncle Ed's. Uncle Ed's are one in ten million. Memories, memories of living a life in Santa Rosa. Memories, memories of hard work, love, and devotion. Yes, Uncle Ed's. Uncle Ed's. Uncle Ed's are one in ten million.
Now, th this next song is, is, a, is every bit of it is very factual. And uh, Carrie can appreciate this. It, uh, it's a song about an oak tree at uh, an elementary school called Yalupa. I interchange the word school and Yalupa in the song sometimes, and not intentionally, but so if I sing Yalupa, you know I'm talking about this school. And uh, this has to do with uh, Celtic uh, traditions, uh, rich in culture, uh, talking to trees. And uh, you know, there, there's much written about you should talk to trees. And everyone should have a tree that they, they talk to. Well, I had a, a, a grandson in kindergarten, and I used to walk him up to the school. And we would go through the back entrance, and there was a stream there, and there was a, a bridge that went over the stream, and then there was a security gate. And you went through the security gate, and then you walk up the hill, and right on the left was this beautiful oak tree. So uh, I was teaching him a lot of Celtic tradition. So we would, when we walk in the morning, we would walk up and stop, and we would whisper. We would do this. We would whisper up to the oak tree, top of the morning to you, Mother Oak. <laughs> and we did that many, many, many times. So uh, this is a song. You know, there, there's an awful lot in this song, and I think that it might be better just to give you the words. But it's, uh, there's a profound statement that uh, young Charlie asked me one day. He says, Grandpa, why do they call it Mother Oak? Why not Father Oak? So the song answers that question, you know. Let's see. Uh, the first line escapes me, so I'm going <laughs> to see if I can get it. Uh, in a Each school day morning, walk hand in hand with my son by my side. Over a bridge through a green swinging gate Where we stop and we look into the sky Then in a whisper each sends a greeting To the beautiful oak tree before us Each of us say, top of the morning to you, Mother Oak Guide us here at school today So when you rise each and every morning greet the day in nature's way Stop smell the flowers Ah, but especially Talk to a tree Why is it Mother Oak Not Father Oak The young man Asked his grandpa This question the old man replied, Well, you see, son, it's this way. Mother Oak is part of Mother Nature. As is all life in our universe, mothers create new generations. Some of the acorns you see here will grow into tall oak trees for the children 
of your children's children. Those kids, they'll stand here look into the sky and say top of the morning to you to the new mother oak mother by the tree that now stands before us and yes they'll talk to the new mother oak so when you rise each and every morning greet the day in nature's way stop smell the flowers ah but especially talk to a tree Grandpa surfaced old wisdom, wisdom they want to share with you. When you're in harmony with nature, you're in harmony with God, and your soul creates a trilogy of the harmony of life. When you're in harmony with nature, you're in harmony with God, and your soul creates a trilogy of the harmony of life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.